who needs a trust instead of a will? Um, so I'm going to be role playing someone who uh, might need a trust or a will. I don't know yet, and you guys are going to be the playing the role of lawyers, which you are. <laughs> oh yeah. So James, I'll ask you some questions. Sounds oh. great. Oh yeah. So the answer to your question is very specific to your situation. Mm-hmm. Um. So I was going to ask you a couple of general questions and maybe some specific ones depending on what happens. Sounds great. Oh yeah. But can you tell me a little bit about yourself, what your family looks like? And who's in yes, it? I am a father. I have two children. Um, they are both below the age of 18. One is 10 and one is 12. Um, and yeah, I am married and I live in uh, Sandy Springs and we have a nice, beautiful home. It's evaluated at $400,000. Is that the only house you own? Uh, no, I have another. I have a rental property. That's also in Fulton? Uh, yes. Uh, as far as, um, so you're married, um, as far as how income is earned, are both of you earning relatively equal incomes or yep um we're both teachers and we both earn around 60 grand a year we've been working for a couple years but as far as other assets go so i know you mentioned those two your your main prop your property where you reside and your rental property mm-hmm. um as far as other assets go can you kind of work through that like so you have a checking account and investment accounts um yeah we have we have a checking account joint checking account we have investment accounts we both have retirement accounts and pensions so i know you're you're a teacher so it's like yep. a, the state teacher fund or is it or yep or is a private school that's the one you nailed it um, a trs yes a trs um pension stuff uh you know we have a we have a brokerage account too um some of that some of that old money from my parents that passed went into that brokerage account and that's kind of it so we have we have a joint checking we have savings um we have a pension um retirement account and we have a uh brokerage account as well oh cool okay and as far as you know what are your biggest concerns about estate planning if something were to happen to you and your spouse right now what are the big things that would keep you, that are bring concern to you that we that we can help you address through a trust or any other estate plan. Um, yeah, I want to make sure that my kids are taken care of. Obviously, you know, mm-hmm. if we're gone, who's going to watch them? That's I want to make sure that my my brother in law, or I'm sorry, my 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 brother and his wife get the kids. Um, you know, legally, I want to make sure that that happens. And also, you know, I don't want I, I want my kids to be able to uh, live in my house if they want to, and I want them to be able to own the rental property. You know, the rental property has provided other supplemental income for us. It's been great for our family, um, and I want my kids to inherit that as well. So something. You mentioned your guardian. Did you tell your brother? Um, yes. So if something were to happen to you and your wife, would you want your kids to stay in your home? And would they be mo- – do you think they would be moving cl- – are they in Georgia? Would they be moving with them? Or I don't really know. About that? I haven't thought about that. Okay. Um, and as far as any life insurance policies, do you have any – Yep. I have I have both me and my wife have life insurance policies. Uh, through your employment or through – or do you buy them from the company? Um. Yeah, through my employment. Okay. Um, and who's the beneficiary on those policies? Um, my wife is the beneficiary on my policy, and my, and I'm the beneficiary on hers. Just to make sure I have an understanding of what's going on, so you own, you so you're married, you have two kids under eighteen, mm-hmm. you're both teachers. Mm-hmm. God bless. That's a rough job. Thank you. Um, we fight sometimes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Um, we love kids. So we talk, you have the properties. You have um, some brokerage accounts. Um, and then, of course, you have automobiles and you live in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And then you have your retirement through the state teaching the TRS. Yep. Um, if you're kind of kind of ballpark what your overall net worth would be, do you have a kind of an idea? I would say like um two million, a million and a half. One thing I would be I would want to identify as a big issue is making sure that your kids are properly taken care of. So this is an advantage of having a trust is that if something were to happen to both you and your wife that you would have a central place where you could appoint a trustee and that's trustees as a fancy name for the person who manages the money um to make sure that your kids are adequately supported in the same standard of living that they currently have so the idea would be is that something would happen to either you or your wife that assets would pass into the trust for their benefit and then upon a triggering event like Typically, it's turning a certain age where they're responsible that the trust would transfer the assets to them. And as a general rule, I don't like when 18-year-olds get money. Um, 25, 30 or, or ages, I typically would more recommend that when they're really more responsible. And in the interim, the trustee can make sure that stuff like they make sure that they stay in their home, their, their health expenses are paid, education, particularly college. 
and make sure that they're generally comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so one thing we're gonna look at when we fund the trust is making sure that we have enough money going into there or something were to happen to you that drawing it down to through their adulthood that it still ha that it makes sense financially. Okay, so so to clarify here, so um, if I want my kids to make sure that th they are staying in my house and if I want them to have to wait past 18 to 25 or 30, that would be a reason for me to get a trust exactly. versus just Absolutely. having a will. Exactly, because a trust automatically conveys it has all these protections built in as part of the document. Gotcha. And things go into the trust when either me or my wife pass away. We can set it up so that so both of us yeah, can... Yeah, there's two points. You could actually put it into the trust while you're still alive. Yeah, cool. as part of and, the drafting process we do. Right, so yeah. you can put it in the trust while you're still alive so that it actually technically belongs to the trust. And then what changes when you pass away is that you're no longer the beneficiary of the trust, your children are the beneficiaries. So gotcha. it's not even transferring the assets to them right away. It's just making them the beneficiaries. And when they're in trust, you have full control over the assets during your lifetime. As long as you're healthy, of sound mind, you can do whatever you'd like with it. It's just like it's exactly like owning the property, mm -hmm, um, right. but you just have it automatically transfer to your beneficiary if something happens to you. Interesting. Okay, if I didn't have children um, and I didn't have as many assets as I do. Mm -hmm then it would probably make less sense for me to have a trust. Is it that would, correct? It would change the consideration. So having the children makes it, it's a red flag where I would strongly recommend you have a trust. Um, mm -hmm. The other situations are more questions about the degree of control you want and also the specificity of your plans. So for example, even if you're a married couple with no kids may still want to have trust to make sure that the surviving spouse is provided for, but then once that surviving spouse passes, you still may want the funds, the remaining funds to go to a different place, whether back to your own family, to a organization you support, to your college to name a wing after you, whatever type of things that you like, so you get more granular control over it. And it also protects your spouse potentially from their creditors or allows the funds to be issued in a way where if they ever need long-term care, that it's separate from your state. Gotcha. And, and to give an even simpler reason that a trust might be appropriate in this situation is if you own the house with your spouse and, and one of you passes away, a trust is a way to make sure that the interest in the house goes directly to the spouse instantly. Potentially, um, if you want it that way. If that's the way you want to do it. Yeah. And uh, same with other assets that you put into the trust. It avoids having to go through the process of probating a will, which means that if your spouse needs access to this, to these resources that you want to leave them, they'll have that access without all the hoops involved in probating the will. Gotcha. So it sounds like you guys are generally in favor of people having a trust almost all the time. Is that yes. correct? As a general, at a minimum, it, it's always a benefit and never a harm. Okay. Does it cost anything to create a trust? Yes. It does. Okay. And it just depends well, on the situation as it, far as what things you need in it. To, to clarify, the, the cost is you, it, uh, you you pay an attorney to yeah, help you yes. draft it. Gotcha. So you, to actually generate a trust, no, there, there's, no, there's no, you don't have to file a trust or anything like that. You, you create it in the document. Um, most of the trusts that we draft up, there's an initial deposit of $10 into the trust. Mm -hmm. So you're essentially giving yourself yeah. As an individual, sorry, as an individual, you're giving yourself $10 yeah. as the trust. And that's kind of right. Yeah. Unlike an LLC or a corporation where you pay an annual fee, there's no annual fees to the trust. No. Once you set it up, it's set it's up. It's there. Gotcha. Okay, cool. That's very interesting. So basically, a trust is never a bad idea. It gives you a lot more control of the stuff that you, um, you know, pass on. And especially if you have some, if you have children, trusts are always a great idea. Um, and and they give you a lot more options. And and basically, they they pull you outside of the legal system versus a will, which which has to go through the legal system. Every single probate. will has to be filed with the court. Right. Gotcha. Interesting. So you go online Thank you very and much. pull up any celebrity will you want. So if you, yeah. if you want to make sure business stays private, you want to limit yeah. that. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode of Let's Talk About Death and Taxes, let us know. Post a comment um, and let us know your thoughts. Guys, if you would like actual legal advice, send us a message. Um, info at Let's Talk About Death and Taxes com is the podcast email. You can also give us a call anytime, 404-939-7562. Um, and yeah, um, send us an email to our uh, main firm email at uh, well, info at Scriber Law or info at Modern Estate Planning either. Yeah, in dot com. Guys, have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.